for the Lord God Almighty. Everything that we're about to do here, please, I want you to notice something. You see, the flesh can never profit us. I want you to be in the spirit. I know in a certain like this, sometimes the enemy can come in and uh, begin to really try to do stuff. But please, try as much as possible to be in the spirit because it is where you can obtain much because the flesh will never profit you anything. So please, let's be in the spirit and in the spirit of worship. I know that the, the, the atmosphere has already been candled. The presence of God is here. But I want you to make a melody. Love on him. Love on the maker. And trust me, your heavens will be open. So as we sing, even as during the song ministration, during the, uh, the word ministration, everything just be in the spirit because the bible says that uh, in john 4 24 says god is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in what spirit and truth so we can't be in the flesh and worship god other than that we'll come here and go out just like that so please be in the spirit god is going to do so many things but i want us to be in the spirit <laughs>
pour my love on you. If praise were like perfume, I'd lavish mine on you. To let it drop, he's gone. Give it up for the master. Let's give it up for the master. Let's give it up for the master. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. 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 There are angels all over. And whilst you were singing, I saw the angels of God touching people with different infirmities different issues and trust me if you have a problem you came here with during my ministration just be checking some of you find out that the issue is gone some of you find out that the issue is gone and I want you to understand that it's not coincidence you are here. You see, nobody can come to me except the father that called me, the father that ordained me, draw you to me. And I want you to know that you have been ordained by heaven to be here today. And God that we serve, the God Almighty, the I am that I am, the King of Kings, shall visit you today. Please, let's take our seat, please. Tomorrow, we cannot sit here, I'm thinking, because God is going to do much. And uh, it's the beginning, it's the first night. Listen to me. Some of you that have issues, I want you to check, because as we were singing, Apostle, I saw 
the angels of the Lord, God Almighty, touching people. And if you had issue, was a ministry, listen please. The word of God is light. The Bible says the entrance of that word gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. The Bible says in Psalm 107, verses 20, that he sent forth his word to deliver them from their afflictions. As the word is being spoken, being released, it's not just a test I'm reading. We know that the test kill it. But it's a spirit behind the word that gives life. The revelation, the rema is what gives life. So you are not just about to hear a word that I prepared. In fact, apostle, whilst I was, I was in my hotel room, I have already made every preparation. The Lord said, no, you are going to change what you've written down. So within a short period of time, the Lord said, no. There is something that I want you to talk about. I know you are not prepared, but I'll give you the grace to do it. And it is tailored to a particular group of people tonight. And as the word is coming, it will be a light in you. And it will banish every darkness in you, around you, and you will see clearly. The word is going to bring healing, going to bring deliverance. Going to bring miracles. Listen to me, please. With all humility, tomorrow eh, we'll enter into some realms by the grace of God. Uh, The Lord is going to do so much. The Lord spoke to me. uh, The Lord has been speaking to me. That Some of you here, I already saw you in a dream uh, Tuesday. The Lord took me in a meeting, showed me what was going to happen. So I want you to know that as you are here, it is not coincidence. God meant for you to be here. God meant for you to be here. Uh, the Lord began to speak to me. He says, there are some particular people that are in the church that we don't tell that to. And today, I wanted to speak to them. I don't know why God wanted me to change my sermon. But he says, start from today. Start from here and build up the momentum tomorrow. Uh, begin with milk. And tomorrow, begin with meat. So we are going to drink milk today, the foundation today. And tomorrow we are going to go deep. (laughs) Uh, Please go with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verses 12. Thank you, Jesus. Please, with that time, and if anybody has it, you can read for me. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, 12. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. It says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it's, it's an, please, can you do the King James for me, please? I'm used to the King James. It's new King James. Yeah, the old King James, please. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay. It says, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, there is always a way that seems good unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And today I'm going to speak to you about something that I've entitled Encounter. You see, the Lord God Almighty in his own wisdom and counsel created a man called Adam. And when Adam was created, the Bible says God made a garden 
in the east of Eden and placed that man Adam in the garden. And uh, when God made Adam, the Bible says that out of the ribs of Adam, God made the man called Eve or the woman and placed them in the garden of Eden, in the east of Eden. And as the Lord placed them there, everything was all right. Whatever they needed for life was all in there. God gave them a command to actually replenish, take dominion, take charge of everything that is made. And left man there. Something happened. So the Bible talks about man being made in the image and the likeness of God. Which means that when God made man, man had the glory. The glory of man was more than the glory of angels. Because man was in the image of God and the likeness of God, which means that we were in the capacity of God. So man was made to take dominion over the things that God has created. But something happened and man fell. And when man fell, man became lower than the angels. I know I'm getting somebody, <laughs> I'm getting... <laughs> We'll go there, don't worry. <laughs> man became lower, a little lower than the angels. Why? Because they fell from grace. The serpent came into the garden, twisted the truth, and, uh, you know, find a way to give to them, sell, it, sell, the, sell the twisted truth, or the treated, <laughs> the treated truth to the woman. And the woman sold it also, uh, whatever proceeds, sold it to the man. And there became the fall. And when the, when the man and the woman fell from grace, the Bible says they were taken out of the garden. And uh, uh, they led them out. And uh, the Lord put in charge of the garden uh, cherubims to guard the place for the man and the woman not to come into the garden. So man has now disconnected. Because in the garden of Eden, God comes there. They are able to communicate with God and everything. They have interaction with God. But the moment man fell, there was a disconnection. My God, I feel the unction. Uh, there was a disconnection because of disobedience to the word of God. And that disconnection did not, you see, man did not, I mean, God did not disconnect from man, but man disconnected from God. So, when that happened, now there is a, there is a need for God because that wasn't really the original intent or purpose for God why he made man. So, God had to also make a provision to reconnect man back to him. Are we following? Okay. So we had the first Adam, which is Adam, and then we have the second Adam, which is our Lord Jesus. Many tried, couldn't, but the second Adam, which is Jesus, was the one that was to bridge the gap, to reconcile man to God. And tonight, I want to share something the church has been neglecting. I am carrying in my womb a revelation and a message which throughout the week will be building upon and will be going deep by the grace of God. Because uh, I was born in Ghana, raised in Ghana from a very poor home. When I was born, I was born into what is called a Christian home. 
My mother goes to church. My aunties, my nieces, my grandmother, everybody goes to church. So what I, bec- what I know is that everybody is a church goer. So I was compelled to go to church. So I became a church or a believer based on the traditions that I've come to realize or come to find. And I began to go to church. I play, I play instrument. I used to play conquer. I was a Christ apostolic. I belong to Christ apostolic. We've been, we've been members of Christ apostolic for so many years. I was born in it, raised in it, and all that. But truly, I didn't know the man I was working or work, working for. I didn't have any connection with this man called God Almighty, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is somebody that is pointing me to him. And I don't know the experience that these people, my mother, whoever was involved, had with the man called Jesus Christ that led to their conversion. But because I saw them going to church, I also followed up and didn't have any relationship. I didn't know him. So I go to church on Sunday. I go to prayer meetings on, I believe, uh, uh, Fridays. I play the conquer. I, I love, I love. I, wherever I go, I give my offerings and everything. But yet still, I never knew him. You see, the, ba- the, the reason why Jesus Christ, the second Adam was manifested, is to reconcile man to God for what Adam failed. I mean, for, for what? For the failure of Adam. So, listen. Here I began to grow. Not knowing my maker. Just going to church because I am obliged to go to church. I do it diligently. I grew. Finish high school. Now, entered into the world. Of music. Now I branched. Don't go to church any longer. I'll step in church once in a day. I mean once a time. That I feel like going to church. And somebody may be asking. Why is this happening? The answer is this. I was following God. Through a person. And never had any connection with the God, with the God we are serving myself. And this is the situation and this is the problem that the church is facing now. Because the kingdom of God. Okay, let me me lower it down. See, you see, Moses came. Moses was manifested to do a certain work for God. You see, there were certain things that Moses carried with him. That whoever goes through those things will be received unto Moses. John the Baptist also was called. With him also he came with certain things or rite of passage that whoever also adhered to those rite of passage would also come into or will be baptized into him. Jesus Christ, the second Adam, also came with certain rite of passage. The Bible says in Matthew chapter, I believe, is it 3, uh, 6, uh, is it 6, 39 or 6, uh, 6, uh, Find the scripture for me. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added unto you. So, you see, the son of God has been manifested. 
His job is to reconcile man to God. But in order for, for him to be able to do this, he needs us to adhere to certain right of passages, certain right of passage, in order for this thing to be actualized or to be achieved. The work with Christ, the work with God, is not it's not based on the decisions of the masses. It's based on your individual decision. It is personal. And so, as a young boy, I was making a decision based on the decision that the masses have made. You see, Jesus made it clear. He says, nobody can qualify to be my disciple if you cannot deny your mother, your father, your siblings, yourself, you cannot become my disciple. What that simply is telling you is this. It is personal. Salvation is personal. It is not It's personal. So as a young boy, I began to do my own thing. Today we are, we are drinking milk. Don't worry, tomorrow we'll, we'll, dive, we'll, dip, we'll dig deep. It's going to be so awesome. <laughs> I began to do my own thing, fell off. You see, and this is the, this is the reason why we see people that we see in church serving today so vibrantly prayerful, all that. And then the next moment, you don't see them any long, anymore. They fall off. The reason is this. They never knew him. There are people in the church today that don't know God. And I'm sorry to submit it. I, I submit this. Today, God said, go and address that issue. You see, the fact that somebody led you to come to church, the fact that your mother, it is a seed that has been planted, is sown in you. And it's a good job. My mother did a good job by bringing me to church. Don't get me wrong. It was a brilliant uh, uh, seed that was planted. Because if that was not planted, I don't think I'll be holding this, this microphone today. But the, the fact of the matter is this. It is based on a personal relationship with God, with, the, with Christ Jesus. Watch this. There was a, a, a young man, very vibrant. I used to know him. I don't know why. I don't know whether it is because of him that inspired this message. God just, but whilst I was preparing to come, he WhatsApped me and said, more grace. I said, more grace. I said, be praying for me. He says, okay. He says, prof, I've fallen off. I, I'm not in the fit any longer. I'm like, what? He says, yeah, I'm not in the fit any longer. Somebody that I've touched the grace of God. And I'm going to address this thing. Listen, God can use anybody. God can use this thing. That doesn't mean this thing knows God. God can use an alcoholic, let an alcoholic enter, pass through this door right now. I can, I can release the unction upon the alcoholic 
And the Lord will use that calling powerfully. Does he know God? He doesn't. So sometimes believers think because somebody is being used of God, that means that the person knows or has a relationship with God. The other time, a donkey saw a vision. And the prophet on the donkey didn't even see a thing. Does it mean that the donkey has any relationship with God? No. Nothing, nothing of that sort. So the finish is that we are in a times where people are falling off the faith. And the reason is this, they never got to know him. The Bible says that we are saved by what? Grace. Through what? Faith. You see, that simply means this. Let me, let me digest this thing. You see, God has given his begotten son. The Bible says in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish. The grace of God has been released. The gift of God has been released. But it is through faith that the grace can be what? Activated. Faith in Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1, it says, It is what? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. According to, I believe, the book of Romans, it talks about faith. It says, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Which means that the substance of faith is actually the word of God. And the Bible talks about this. It says, nobody can come to the son except the father draweth them to him. Which means there is a voice that God will release. And that word is what draws you to him. And as he draws you to him, you accept him. You accept the gift of God. Then, you are saved. It is a personal encounter. And there are many that are doing the body of Christ harm. Because they have never had any encounter with the, 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 with the God we serve. There are many believers. You see them standing there today. Oh, this preacher. Oh, no. He, he's not. He's, he's possessed. He, he, there is a devil. You know, he's using a, a cote wine. Uh, he's the, you see, the, the spirit of Christ is not in, in him or her. The spirit of Christ is not in him or her. So he cannot, he or she, he, he or her, I mean, he must, uh, he or she cannot, Jesus, help me, cannot actually discern spiritual things. That person cannot discern spiritual things. You see? So, the thing is this. There are many things that are going on that if things were things were made right, it shouldn't what go that way. Many that claim to be children of God are actually children of the devil. Wow. I'm telling you. Oh, you may not. You may not. I'm telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. Because it is by the grace of God that men can be saved. And it's a calling that the Father calls. And you hear it and you respond. So that word there, grace, faith, the faith there means God calling to you. And the grace, the gift of God, you receive him by the call, you receive. So I was in the world, doing my own things, doing all kinds of things. Why somebody, may, ah, is this not 
Miss, Miss, Mrs. Philomena's son. Why is he pierced? Why? He, he's, he's an avid believer. I am not. I was in church, but not of the church. Because I never knew him. Never had any relationship with the maker. This thing is personal. This thing called faith in Christ Jesus is personal. Along the line, I did so many things. Those that know my past will tell you. I did so, so many kinds of things. Some even don't believe. Me preaching here, I never wanted to be a preacher. No. Even now, if you tell me, I don't want to. Me, I don't want to be a preacher. Oh, yeah, I'm telling the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this because of maybe seeing somebody uh, prospering or whatever. No. I am compelled by grace to do this. So I'm telling you the truth based on what God has given to me. God touched me in jail. That is where he got my attention. I will never... No, 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 no. no. Hold microphone. Do you know that the number of preachers are, ins uh, preachers are insulted for telling me you, you are going to be a man of God? No, I will, I will insult you and leave. But you see, I never had the spirit of Christ in me because I never knew him. I just followed my parents to church. And that I thought that was the foundation, that is the basis of Christianity. And it was based on tradition. The Bible says that the father will draw you to the son. And you will receive the son. And when you receive the son, now he will come and live in you. You in him. You become one. Then the spirit of Christ draws in you. Now it doesn't even end there. There are certain rites of passages. The Bible says that seek first the kingdom. So you are seeking the kingdom. When you find the kingdom, you have seen it. I've seen uh, uh, Christ is tied that church, uh, Los Angeles. I've seen I'm standing outside. But I haven't gotten the access to enter into the place. There are certain things, protocols that I need to adhere before I can come in. It's like I want to come to the U.S. of A. There are certain things that I need to do. There are visa processes that I need to go to, uh, through to actually obtain and then uh, you know, buy tickets, do all that, all the protocols, and then they would finally grant me access into the place. Such is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. So when you receive Christ, yes, still, you are not entirely in the kingdom. The moment you receive Christ Jesus, you have seen the kingdom. You haven't entered yet. Because Christ, the son of God, also came with his own baptism. Moses baptized the children of Israel in the, in, the, in, the, in the Red Sea into his baptism. That the children of Israel coming out of the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the land of Egypt and passing the Red Sea and the pillar of cloud that covered them were a type of baptism. That they were baptized into Moses. John the Baptist also came with his own baptism. He was baptizing people in the Jordan River, the baptism of water, for repentance. Jesus also came, he says, he, he that is coming after me will baptize with the fire and what? With the Holy Ghost. So, for somebody to actually enter into the kingdom and to actually be a kingdom citizen, all the rite of passage has to be adhered. And when it's adhered, you enter into the kingdom. Then you can exercise the kingdom dominion. You get, you give your life to Christ. As you give your life to Christ, you do water baptism. 
When you do the water baptism, you have to do what? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when you do the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now you are guaranteed to enter into the kingdom. Then you enter. Now you begin to actually explore what the kingdom has to offer. You see, let me share this with you. There is a man called, there was a man called Saul. Saul began to persecute the church. And why do you think Saul was persecuting the church? He thought he was a believer. He thought he loved God. He thought he was doing God a, a favor by uh, removing those that are not really adhering to certain traditions that he came to meet concerning the things of God. But really, he was actually not with God and not, didn't even have the spirit of God in him. And that is why he couldn't really judge spiritual things. And to know that these people are my brethren. And in fact, I have to align with them and seek what they have. And also be able to really take dominion and do what God is giving, to me, giving me to do. But because he didn't have the spirit of God, he went ahead and persecuted the church. You see, until Saul had an encounter or receive a call from God on his way to Damascus that Saul truly changed because now he's seen God. And it was through the call that he received now. He was what? He was saved. He saw the light. You see, Paul was following crowd. He was really a good, good, good teacher of the law. He did everything right. He, he followed the righteousness of the law. Practiced it, practiced it very accurately. But yet still, he was on the road to, to, to hell. If he had died, he would go to hell. He never knew God because he didn't really satisfy the needs or the requirement that God demanded of the people that are, for, uh, that are supposed to come to him. Though I said in the beginning that he came to redeem, I mean reconcile man to God, but there were certain things that people had to go through in order for this thing to be, to be actualized. Such as receiving him. But before you receive him, God the Father has to actually call you to him. And so tonight, there are many of you seated under the sound of our voice that this message is actually for you. As you are hearing me, this is your call. I'm telling you, you are hearing the voice of God. I'm not speaking my own words. Like I told you, I never prepared this one. You are hearing my call. I mean the call of God. And it is for you to respond to the call of God. And as you respond, now you are guaranteed your spot in him. So until Paul, I mean Saul, received the, received the call on the way to Damascus, he never knew the truth. Because he never knew him. He only followed the traditions of men. That his forefathers, and what he didn't know is this. His forefather had encounters with this God that he came to meet. That he didn't meet, meet him at his dispensation. But they met him at their dispensation. And they had a relationship with him. But him was just here. Okay, my father worshipped him here. Okay, let's worship him here. Ah, they, were, they used to wash their, their feet before they worship him. They used to do this. Let me do it. So he was just following traditions. 
but not having an encounter with this God that their father actually met. Moses met him, spoke to him. Because the side of God you get to see is the side of God you get to experience. When he shows you that he's Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, it means you get to enjoy healing. If he shows you the side of him that tells you he's Jehovah, what uh, 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 was it called? Uh, uh, Jehovah Jireh, it means he wants to provide for you. So the side of him that you get to know is the side of him. Uh, you see, when he reveals it to you, there were benefits as tied to it because he told, uh, what was it called, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, apostle Peter, he asked the disciples, whom do men say I am? And the eleven didn't know. They couldn't tell. They were walking with him. They know him as the son of man, Jesus. But they didn't know him that he's the son of God. But the father in heaven revealed this mystery unto Peter. And Peter responded, he says, you are Christ, the son of God. And by that revelation, there was a, there was a benefit to the revelation. Remember, I told you the side of God you see is what you actually get. The bene- there are benefits attached to it. So the side you see is what you actually access. And it becomes yours forever. Because when, when Peter saw, I mean, got the revelation, that Levin also had it. He told, Jesus told them, don't tell anybody. Because whoever I reveal the secret to, you can also partake of whatever blessing attached to it. So the, the knowledge, the wisdom of God that I possess, as I begin to share, you, bega- you begin to come into alignment of any benefit that God has made available to me. You see? So he said, Peter, unto you, I will build my church upon this rock, you see, and the gate of hell shall not prevail. He says, uh, I'll give you, is this what? The keys. I'll give you the keys of what? Go to, go to Matthew chapter 16, please. Put Matthew chapter 16 from the 15 downwards for me, please. Let's read this quickly. Thank you, Jesus. I am branching. I am really branching. But give me. Okay. It says, he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed, un- has, have not revealed, no, sorry, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Give me the last verse. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste the taste of death. Till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. The last verse, I believe the 20 verse. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I thought he said he shouldn't. <laughs> Which one? Are you sh- 28. Okay. Tw- 20, yeah. The 20 verse, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 20, yeah. And he charged, he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, because they can ask the same thing that they have access to. So the side of God that he, he reveals to you, you get to exercise domain. I mean, you get to access it and unlock certain things. It comes to the blessing. That is why when Moses saw the back parts of, G- of, of the Lord, he began to write Genesis. He began to see everything that God has done in the past. And he says, I will show forth my goodness. That is when everything began to open up for Moses. So put this, let's put this uh, in our thoughts, okay? 
The side of God that you've got to see is the side of God you get to experience. And in our walk with him, we have to desire to experience more of him. The day you stop seeking, you, stop, you, you die. The moment you stop seeking him, you die. You see, I am not comfortable where I am. I want to go ascend more higher. And daily, I go into the presence of God and seek his face. So, it is very important. So, listen, I want to say this. Don't allow anybody to pull you away from what you have experienced with God. Because those that know they are God, you see, nothing can pull them away. Those that receive the call, nothing. Not even death. Not even angels. Not even powers, principalities. Things present, things to come. Hear me? Whatever, you can't pull them away from the love of God. Because there is something they've seen. That is why Paul never, I mean, Paul never gave up. In times of troubles, trials, whatever he went through, because he saw, he saw something that he'd never seen before. Had that persecution come in the times of uh, uh, him being caught so he would have left the <laughs> he would have left the practice of the law. But because of how what he beheld, he held on tight to God and began to navigate with God. Listen, in your walk with him, your friends, your family members. It could be somebody you actually adhere to, like you cherish so much. I want you to understand that, listen, they can fall because the experience you have had is not the same experience they've had. And you don't need to put your, or make your, hear me, make your work with God based on them. No, 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 no. It's a personal relationship. And so don't look at somebody that are falling away and say, ah, this one was very prayerful. This one was this. And so, ah, how can, no, 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 no. He never, or she never saw God. He, she never received the call of God. So she wasn't, or he wasn't in Christ. Though he was amongst us. Please, never let anybody that moves, whether be it your mother, be it your father, be it whoever it is. Because if you are not able to deny them, then you don't, you, you don't, you don't, you don't qualify to become the disciple of Christ. You have to even deny yourself. Apostle, I remember. <laughs> Nothing. Hey, you can hey, kill my body. I'll stand for Christ. Hey, take away my hey, take away my room. Let me sleep outside. I will still love him. If you like, here, mash everything. I will still love him. I know what I've beheld with my eyes. I know what I've seen. Nobody led me. Say, Kwabna, come, let me take you to Christ. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I was walking in my cell room. I've had meetings with my lawyers. They said, nothing is, nothing is possible. You, you are going to go home. I was walking. I heard a, I heard a loud, hear me, voice. Says, aren't you tired? Aren't you tired working it your own way? Something supernatural changed my entire continent. And I, when I walk into the common room, I, I don't know what pushed me to take a Bible. I took a Bible, walked into my cell room. The moment I walked into my cell room, I just knelt down something. <laughs> I knelt down. I said, Lord, today I've done it my own way. I'm tired. I was so exhausted. I don't have time to share my story with you. It, it, it is intriguing. <laughs> the Lord knows how to call everybody. He knows the time, a point of time. But I want to say this. Listen. Sow the seeds in your children, in your husbands, in your sisters. Bring them to church. Knowing what you know now. But tell them, make the truth available to them. Tell them it is a personal relationship. 
and you know that their time is going to come. That they, they, God is going to call them. God is going to whisper something to them. God is going to show them a vision. God is going to give them an encounter. That will be their call. And they're going to come to the faith. And be praying for them. Sow those seeds. Be praying for them. Never give up. As I received him, the moment I finished praying that prayer, the peace I've never felt before all of my life just came upon me. And it looked as if I, hear, hear me, it looks as if I was in nothing. It looks as if I wasn't in jail. Because Christ breathed on me. Christ walked into me. That same moment. <laughs> and what happened next was just, just miraculous. It was just amazing. And everything else just began to fall in place. Just began to fall in place. Listen. God brought you here. You are hearing the voice of God. The way may seem good to you. Coming to church with your brothers, your sister, your fiancé, your husband. It may seem good as if you are part of something. But it's actually a relationship. God needs a relationship. It's a personal something. And today, he's calling some of us. There are some of us seated here, we have never received him. We haven't be, even been baptized. Tonight, I'm going to give Pastor Dan a job. There are some of us, we are going to be baptizing again. There are some of us, we are going to receive the baptism of the Spirit. Because all these things have to be actually, uh, actually done for you to enter into the, into the kingdom. Time will not permit me, but tomorrow we'll go deep. I'm not, today I'm just laying, it's just a milk. No, it's just a milk. But listen, if you have not been baptized, the Holy Ghost has not come upon you. If not been dipped in water, there is nothing preventing you. You are not in cell like I was in. You are not on a cross that you couldn't get water to be baptized. You are here. Apostle is here. Pastor Dan is here. All the pastors are here. We have to adhere in order to enter. So if you are, see, there are some of us seated here. We are just seeing the kingdom. We are seed. We are just watching. We are in the kingdom. We have government of righteous, uh, government of salvation is on us. But we are not able to enter into the kingdom, and so we can't exercise any benefit in the kingdom. Until we go through all the things that the rite of passage. Today, listen, I came here with an assignment, and I know. See, if you don't believe, I can actually give my phone, my, my phone to Apostle. I've written, I was taken into this meeting. And I know by faces. That people seated here that are going to respond to this call today. There are some of us that are going to be given encounters today. Tomorrow we'll ascend higher. <laughs> deep, 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 deep. <laughs> so please, I want you to stand up for me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it is a personal relationship. Walk with God. It is a personal relationship with God. Just close your eyes. And uh, if I would have the pianist. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah.
Tomorrow we're going to go into how to go into the kingdom, how to obtain kingdom power, everything. We're going to go into deep. We're going to really go into deep. And the next day, we'll, a lot of things that you don't, you didn't know, God by his spirit is going to reveal all these things. And we are going to be equipped for the kingdom work. Glory. Amen. I surrender. Please close your eyes. Lay your hand, your right hand on your chest. Jesus. As well as this song is being ministered. I want you to assess yourself. If any of these things applies to you, I want you to know that God spoke to you through me. There are some of you that you were seated there. Something is not... It's like you are not feeling fine. The Holy Spirit is nudging you. You're going to respond to this call and your life will never ever be the same just as I was. I did the other time, some years ago, in Santana City Jail. Say, Lord, renew my zeal. Renew my heart. By your spirit. Help me. To do. The things. You've given to me to do. Father. If there is anything that. I've fallen short. Forgive me. The people that need to walk here. If you want to be saved today. As I begin to sing this song, I want you to walk up here. And uh, I'll lead you into a powerful prayer. And Christ Jesus will walk into you. Your life will never ever be the same. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. I surrender. I surrender. Walk up, walk up, walk up. All eyes closed as we sing this song. All to Jesus, the Savior, I surrender. I surrender. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender all to be my blessed Savior. I surrender all. online. You can join us. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. And, uh, I'm still waiting. God is dealing with certain people. God is still dealing with you. The Holy Spirit is still dealing with you. Come up here. Oh, to be my blessed Savior. Ah, I'm still waiting. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. after me Lord Jesus this evening I come into your presence I 
denounce the world. Repent from all that works. I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on a cross. He was buried. And on the third day, he resurrected. Today, with my mouth, I proclaim him as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, let's clap for these wonderful souls that the Lord has won today. Um, God bless you. I saw the Holy Spirit working on you so much. Uh, please, uh, do we have like a mint or something? Spirit was working on you guys. I saw you particular. The Lord was working on you. I'm so glad that you made that decision to come here today. That the Lord, the Lord, He wasn't by accident. He wasn't by accident. He's divinely ordained. And God is so much glad that you've come to him, your first love. Your names have been written in the Lamb Book of Life. And as he comes, if we are still here, you'll be caught up with him. Whether you are there, he will resurrect. Okay? You will never die at the uh, uh, death of the sinners. Okay? Even if you die, you'll have life. You'll live. Okay? Things have changed from today. You no longer walk in that condemnation any longer. It's been washed by the blood of Jesus. You have been made a new. You've been made new. You've been washing the blood. I want you to speak to uh, uh, the pastors. They're going to take your information. Uh, they're going to speak to you, okay? And they're going to show you what next to do, okay? I love you. You've seen him. you've responded, responded to the call. Wow. Today that attack will lift off, okay? Listen, angels are all over. Ha, angels are all over, all over. So mama, take your seats, okay? And then somebody will walk up to you. Do you live around here? Yeah, you live. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's clap for Jesus. Oh, this papa here, I saw you last Tuesday in my dream. You, you, you. I saw you in my dream last Tuesday. There were a couple of people I came here for. I saw him in my dream. This one, particular one. I saw you in my dream. There is a woman that is here and I'm going to be speaking to you shortly. Please, let's take a seat. Let's take a seat as I begin to minister. Please, if you can stand up. Uh, Apostle, please just, please, let's stand up. Let's stand up. <laughs> yeah, let's stand up. Thank you so much. Say, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. Lord Jesus. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Lord Jesus. I am in your presence. I've come here for an encounter. As I pray, may you reveal yourself to me. In Jesus' name. I want you to begin to pray that prayer. Begin to pray that prayer.
Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray, 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 pray. Say, Lord, encounter me. Give me an encounter. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, as I pray, release your power, your glory over my life to change situations in my family, in my city, in my region, in my country, in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, use me for revival. Use me for revival in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to Thank you, Jesus. Play, play this. Yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Dan. Is it Daniel? Daniel. Please stretch your hands forth. When you came to the office, were speaking to me I saw two angels of God that accompanied you and the spirit of the Lord began to minister to me concerning you and your destiny I saw one of the angels with Bible I saw the other with a horn and an oil. And suddenly my eyes began to behold what the Spirit of the Lord was showing me in a vision. And I beheld you in my visions. And you were wearing, wearing white garment. And in front of the garment, I saw apostle. I saw the word apostle. I saw the word apostle. Please, when let the amen, let the, let's not, let the amen, let the clapping, you see. We can respond, amen, amen. If it's something bad, we cancel it. We destroy it. We, we have to be proactive. You see? And then you walk with me and everything is going to be fine. And I saw the word apostle written. And the word of the Lord came to me and said to me that I 
chose him even before he was given to his mother to do something for me. The, but the enemy has been restricting and buffeting you from actually walking in this purpose fully. The Lord said to me that these two angels have come to activate a certain covenant that he the Lord had with you. And as this activation takes place, in you I see healing. In you I see healing. In you I see deliverance. And I see the teaching gift in you. And listen, the Lord said, there is going to be an activation that is going to take place and you are going to be ushered into the next phase of your life and ministry. And I saw as this activation takes place, I saw the Lord beginning to actually move you, moving things, like moving, opening up things for you. And suddenly everything that was kind of barren be, began to prosper. I saw the wheat that the, the sun has actually caught on that has been dried. I saw them resurrected. I saw them resurrected. And suddenly I saw me and you in a place in Africa. When we entered that place, I saw the Lord opening doors for you. There is a time coming that the Lord is going to take you and the Lord is going to actually minister to your old general overseer. There are seven doors that are going to open for you. And he's going to minister to him. And it's going to be opening and God is going to cause you to enter because there are people that are tied to your destiny for you to unlock them. And they are waiting for your manifestation for them to also be delivered and be free. Because I saw me and you in Kenya, okay? In Kenya. And I saw the Lord actually opening certain doors there for you. I saw churches there connecting with you. And I, I was like, what is happening? The Lord said there are some people here in Kenya, Nairobi, that needs to be, uh, uh, what's it called, unlocked into their purpose and their destiny. And they are tied to you. They are tied to you. And so what the enemy has been doing is actually tying you down. And as the enemy ties you down, those people there are also going to be delayed. So these two angels have come to activate the covenant that God has with you. So I saw as it were in the spirit when the angels came I saw one gave you a bible and as the bible was placed in your right hand and I saw suddenly in the spirit you knelt down and I saw the one with the horn of oil and the one with the trumpet there were two angels one was carrying oil in the right hand I saw one uh, uh, what's it called uh, trumpet in the left hand and I saw the one, that same angel, poured oil on you. And I saw he blew the trumpet and said, Tell Daniel that it is time for his manifestation. The Lord said he's seen your patience. He's seen your dedication. And I'll tell you something offline. I'll tell you something. Okay? I'll tell you something. That is just a caution. Okay? Just a caution, okay? The Lord is going to lift you up. The Lord is going to lift you up. The Lord is going to lift you up, okay? The Lord is going to lift you up. Let the humbleness, let the humility continue because that is what God sees in you. And that is why it is triggering this elevation. So suddenly the Lord will have me say, tell him that that which the pamawem, that which the locust, the caterpillar eats. I will, I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. Do you have any connection to Kenya? What do you, what connection do you have with Kenya? You grew up there in Kenya. Oh wow. Do you 
you know you have healing? Amen. Do you know that? Yes. Papa, I will tell Papa something. I will tell Papa something. Papa need to activate something for you. Okay? I will discuss with Papa. And Papa is going to do something for you. And this thing that I saw the angels of God doing shall be activated. And something supernatural will begin to... Listen to me. I see cancers. I see cancers. I see tumors being healed under your hand. Listen. I see him in crusade. But listen, whatever and what, wherever God lifts you, however tall God lifts you, never leave this man. Never. Please. Okay? Never. Because... I am a prophet that don't see just near. I see far. What I'm saying, if I be a prophet, I don't want to really, but see, I see you on a very big platform. Very big platform. And it's like crusades. Doing crusades. Now, apostle, wherever he goes, eh, he will open churches for this ministry. I see that. Oh, Jesus. You are you are a covenant child, and the Lord said, "Today, you are part of the reason why I came here. You are part of the reason why I came here. I don't just walk to places. No, you are the reason why I came here. You are part of the reason. In fact, there is a lady. This this man is also part of the reason why I came here. This man, I saw him in a dream." And I saw another lady in a dream. And in the dream, I was here. And I was ministering. And I called up the lady. And the lady looks as if somebody, a relative died. A relative died. Not long. Almost looks like fresh. And I called the lady. And there is something also that I needed to address. And it was about the husband home. Because the lady was here, but the husband was not here. And something was going on with the husband and the lady. And the lady had a child. And, <laughs> wow. Please, is there anybody here that you've, you've lost a relative? I'm talking, about, it's actually a lady that lost a somebody like a relative. Not long ago, any lady like that here? You. How long ago? August. Last year. Is there anybody like that here? Because that the person is not long. Because in the dream, it looks as if it will happen. It, it, it's like last Saturday. The person passed last Saturday. A knee that passed. When? couple of weeks. It's recent. You have one child? One. Just one. You are the one. Come. And you, please, come. You, your own. I saw myself delivering you. In fact, Apostle, we began, and I said, no, I didn't, call, I didn't finish. Come tomorrow. So in the, in the dream, I said, go, go, but come tomorrow. The same person, the same person. This one is God bringing him here. Yes. You, it's God that walked you here. I'm telling you, it's God that brought this man here. Because I tackled this, this woman's issue first. And then I went to him in my dream. I went, I went to him and I tackled him. And then I, after I finished, I did something else. And I said, no, I couldn't continue. Come tomorrow. Listen to me. Tomorrow, eh, we are going to enter into a realm. By the grace of God, we'll enter into healing even tonight. Tomorrow, I don't want... Pastor, I don't want us to actually use our water. I want people to come with their own water. 
And in fact, tomorrow, God showed me, we'll, we'll fill the, the sanctuary will be filled. Yeah. The Lord said, there is, hear me, everybody seated here, there is somebody that is tied to you that as you bring them here, they will be saved. And the Lord said to me that everybody that is under the sound of my voice, because you are here, the heavens over your life has opened. And the Lord said, Abozo, the Lord said, by the end of this meeting, many, many will enter into a strange breakthrough. Into a strange miracle. In fact, I see the heaven open. Please, everybody, lift your phone up. Lift your phone up. Lift your phone up. Open your credit score. Open your credit. Look at your credit score. I want to just start today. We will start today. Listen. Mama, you are need to, because you are a pastor, and I don't need to devote this thing here. Uh, it kind of a little bit sensitive. Yeah. But I will pray for you. Here, because the angel of the Lord is working with me, okay? okay. I'll pray for you. After that, I'll, I'll meet you and I'll talk to you. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't devour that uh, issue here, okay? So, listen, let me see by hand. Tomorrow, and tomorrow too, uh, Abbaso, tomorrow eh, we'll start early. I'll take the microphone early. And I'll start, I'll speak to everybody. In fact, those that actually brings people in. Because the Lord is questioning people to bring at least five people tomorrow. Everybody. Listen, please, lift your uh, phone up. Lift your phone up. Lift your phone up. Open. Did you check your credit score? Please check your credit scores. I want to screenshot it because, because it's going to go higher. Tomorrow, I want everybody, please, if you come with somebody, eh, I want you to tell them or you can actually pick bottles of water. We'll turn water to wine. Okay? I've not done that in anywhere, but we'll turn water to wine. It's possible. Okay? And as we go, we'll go deeper tomorrow. I'll be, there'll be supernatural, supernatural movement that God is going to do. So let's do this quickly. And I'll pray for the sick quickly. Okay? And uh, tomorrow is going to be a time of prophecy. And please, do not limit yourself do not do not stay home do not stay home come here something is going to change lift your phone up please did you screenshot it because most of you will come and testify tomorrow because this is we are going to have testimony time where people are going to testify to what god is doing now we are in revival now so lift the phone up father in your name. Just, just be quiet. Let me pray. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to these phones and I speak to their credit scores. As you bless the water and the water turned to wine, as you went with them and confirmed their words with signs following, I have done your bidding as an obedient servant. I ask that every single one that is standing here, let their phones begin to be touched now. Wherever the credit score is now, I decree and I declare, let the credit score begin to increase. From negative to positive. From 300 to 900. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I pray, I command let it happen now. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that you have done it. I thank you that the credit scores are going to increase 10 times, 5, to, uh, five points, 10 points, 20 points, 50 points, uh, 100 points, 200 points now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to log out and check within a few minutes. Just check about maybe 10 minutes. Just check, okay? Just check. 
Is there anybody, those that are sick here? If you are sick, come. Quickly. Let's do this quickly. Let's do this quickly. Tomorrow, how many people are bringing people? Lift your hands. How many are coming? Today is just introduction. I haven't done anything. Oh, you are not coming tomorrow. Oh, really? Wow. Are you coming tomorrow? The woman there. You are coming. Who is your nurse? Who works with the, what's it called? Like uh, uh, people. You work with people. Like, uh, is it home care or whatever they call it? Is what? Where? Facial. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to speak to you. Don't worry, okay? Don't worry. I'm going to speak to you. Don't worry. Mama, you. No, yeah. Do you know anybody that does like a, is nursing? Friends. Okay. You, what do you do? You do not work. Come. Come. You come to church here? She comes here? Apostle, she, she's... I pray for you today and God begins to turn things around would you serve this church faithfully would you give your give your tithe give offering everything like that okay okay uh-huh. yes sir uh-huh. hey when when you guys will be help me oh <laughs> But now your husband now. Uh, uh, help me. Yeah. Please. Don't forget to. I know me myself sometimes forget my own name. Uh, I know, but just be calm. Be calm. And when you come, you don't be under pressure. Okay? The Lord. So, do you want to work? Because, Apostle, this is what I saw. I saw the Lord giving you, eh? And your husband, a company. Okay? And it was like, you guys were taking care of people. Hmm? And it was yours. It was, some, it was sort of like, a, uh, uh, what was it called? Like, nest. because I saw, I saw your husband, I saw you, and you were helping, and your husband was wearing like a nursing robe. And you yourself. Okay? And I saw, it's like you guys entered into a room. But the room was filled with people, beds and different things. And I saw people lying there. And I saw different workers working, on the, working with them. And the company belonged to you. Belonged to you and your husband. And I saw the Lord through this company prospered you, you and your husband. You got a lot of money. And the reason why I was asking this is this. That you would you be faithful because the money was the money I saw was a huge money. That sometimes you know when people get money, sometimes it's really it's 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 a hair, and then we begin to move away. Where would the blessing came? We begin to move away and stuff like that. That is why I asked you: if God prospers you, would you be faithful? Because God is going to do for you. You may not you may not believe what I'm saying now. No 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 no. Don't worry don't worry don't worry. You don't need to believe it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because I saw the Lord giving them this commission. And it was like a, a nursing something. And God prospered you and your husband so much. So please, I'm going to pray for you. Okay? Whatever thing that is going on, don't allow the devil. Okay? Hmm? Come to apostle. Speak to apostle. Prayer. The Lord will settle everything. Okay? 
Don't worry. Where, is, where are your children? Lift your hands to heaven. Apostle. Oh, yeah. Please, the sick people, please. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Father. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Take it. In Jesus. It's done. It's done. Please remember. Remember what I'm saying. See. If you stay faithful to this house. And to the, to the commission God is giving apostle. So would the business lift. So would the business prosper. Okay. It is done. Everything else God is going to settle. Whatever I didn't speak, God is already taking care of. Okay? It's done. Please clap for Jesus. Please, what do we have here? What do we have here? Your bag. For how long? One. Ten days now. It's paining you, setting you. Your bag there. Okay. It's now, right? Two days. Two days hurting you. Okay. So what couldn't you do before? Can you do, can you do something quickly? Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, it's hurting. Look up. Can, can the camera pick his, her face? Okay. Do, do. Let me see. Okay. So it's hurting. Okay. Lift, lift your hands to heaven. Please stretch your hands here. Father, for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. I command this infirmity to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke this pain in Jesus' mighty name. And I command your back, your spine, to align with the word of God. By his stripes you are healed. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. I thank you. Quickly, quickly quickly. No, 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 no. Do something. Do that thing again. Let me see your face. Do, do, do. Please, quickly, quick. We don't have time. Do, see. Quickly, 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 quickly. Bam, 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 bam. Is it gone? Come here, come here. Twitch, twitch. You feel good. Say that again. I feel good. Feel good. She said she feel good. She feel good. What would you say to the Lord Jesus? Wow. Look at that. 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 Look. She feel good. Wow. Lift your hands to heaven. Your healing is permanent. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give glory. Give glory to Jesus. Take your seat. Take your seat. Please come here. Come here. What's going on? Diabetes. Please, do we have water here? Please get me a bottle of water. How long ago? About a week ago. Okay, I'm going to do this for you. Are you going to be here tomorrow? You got to be here, okay? And I want you to come with three people, okay? Try. Speak to them. You are an evangelist, okay? Speak to them, okay? You are going to go. The same doctor that gave you the bad report who actually... We amend your report, okay? The blood of Jesus is going to set you free now. I'm going to give you the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus is going to filter everything that was, was, was found in your body. And you are going to be made whole, okay? From today, you don't have diabetes, okay? What were the symptoms, actually? Okay. okay. Father, oh, come, come. Man of God, come. Father, I bless this in the name of Jesus. I turn this into your blood. As she drinks your blood, let your blood filter everything. Let every demonic deposit come out and let her be healed completely from diabetes. In Jesus' name, amen. Open it and drink it quickly. Please. You have, uh, what is going to come on? Your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Bring 
Jesus, the same Jesus that healed the, the woman would take this thing away. Do you believe it? Okay. Father, I thank you. Jesus. Father, I command whatever you did not put there, I command it out in Jesus' name. And I declare healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are healed. Amen. You are healed. You are healed. Please come. Please be checking your phones, eh? Be checking for the credit score. Go ahead, talk to me. We can do this later. Uh -huh. Go ahead, go ahead. Blood pressure, eh? Yeah, blood pressure. Okay, okay. Please, can I get water? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Father, I bless this in the name of Jesus. I turn this into your blood. That was shed on Calvary. As she drinks it, let everything come out, every demonic deposit, and let it be completely healed in Jesus' name. This woman, I feel like you are going to actually vomit. You're going to vomit our stuff. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, I activate her deliverance. Let every trace of evil deposit. That were put in her. <laughs> Leave her now. <laughs> Leave her now. <laughs> Leave her now. <laughs> Leave her now. In the name of Jesus. Father, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I declare healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Drink that. Drink that. Okay. You are going to be vomiting. Okay. Yeah. It's normal. Okay. It's normal. Okay. God bless you. And I pray. Give me your ring. Are you married? Yeah. Father, let this blood settle everything. From today, let the spiritual spouse be separated from her. Let the dream she's been having be ended and settle her in Jesus' name. Amen. Tomorrow be here. I'll prophesy to you, okay? I prophesy to you tomorrow be here. And make sure you bring uh, three people, four people. Man of God, come. Man of God, come. Please, who has like something like physical? He, he, he can, he, it's physical? Heart burn. Please, let, give water. Water, water. Thank you. Father, I bless this in the name of Jesus. I turn it into the blood of Jesus Christ. As she takes it, let every condition in her body be gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Drink it. Your back. Do you feel it now? Mm. You don't feel it? Please pray for her. Pray for her for me. Command the back to be healed, okay? Please, ma'am. Are you sure? Numbness. Now, so you have numbness in your feet right now. Come. Pass it. Come. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Is it this feet? Both of them. Okay. Okay. Father, in the name of... Can you stand behind them for me, please? Father, in the name of Jesus. Every numbness leave in Jesus' name. 
every back pain, every shoulder pain, whatever injury in the body, I command it to leave now. Every powers of darkness afflicting her, leave now. In the mighty name of Jesus, leave her now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Father, let the back be healed. Let the back be. Please come. Please come. Let the back be healed. Let the numbness go. In the name of Jesus. I command every numbness in this leg to leave now. Begin to feel it. Begin to feel it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to feel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to feel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please, uh, feel your leg. Tell me. Your back, was it? Did you, were you feeling it right now? Uh, right now, I'm feeling it before. Before you were feeling it? A year. Okay. So now, today, were you feeling it? You weren't feeling it today? You don't have it anymore. You won't have it anymore. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. Tomorrow, be here. I'll speak to you. Okay? I'll go deep into some things. Okay? Tomorrow, be here. Mama, please come. What? Please give me water. Father, this is just an ordinary water. But in your hand is anointed. I turn it into the blood of Jesus Christ the heals that delivers as she drinks this let her bring praise report to glorify your name let every kiss be settled in Jesus name Amen Father I thank you speak to him but my time I want to be pa, 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 be coming in, be committed okay the Lord has an assignment over your life and whatever you've gone through in the past okay does not define you the Lord wants to begin to do something for you because I see, I see him pre opening prison doors for people that are bound and he comes here, but Papa, he, he comes here. Mr. Yes. Please, there is a reason why God brought you here. And the Lord wants to really use this ministry to refine you and to bring you into the fullness of what God has called you to. Because I'm seeing the Lord visiting him and as the Lord visits him, it looks as if it's like a yearning, a pull within his spirit to begin to seek after God with all his might and power. And it is the fire of God because God is now leading you. It is a place of leading that in that place of leading, you'll find that which is placed for you. I don't know where you are coming from, but tomorrow, eh, please come. I want to really go deep into what I'm seeing. And I would go into your family. I would expose some things. And I'll break some things. 
and the rest will be glory for you. Okay? It sounds good, right? Okay. Okay. The Lord is going to use you. The Lord is going to use you. Do you believe that? Of course I believe that. You do? Oh, yes. Awesome. Yes. Familiar. Yes. It's going to be more intimate with you. Yes, yes. From these days going. That's what I need. That's what you need. That's the fire I'm talking about. That's the fire. Tomorrow we'll go, we'll, we'll talk more, okay? We'll talk more. So tomorrow I'll be, I'll be, I'll be meeting. You may be the first person I'll minister to tomorrow, okay? Awesome, 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 awesome. God bless you. Papa, please come, please come. You, yours will continue tomorrow. We'll start today. We'll continue tomorrow, okay? And uh, the Lord is going to do something for you. Because I, I will speak to you, I'll prophesy to you, and we'll set you free. Because I saw the spirit of death leaving him. In the dream, eh? I was speaking to him, prophesying over him. And as I began, I finished prophesying. And I was laying my hand to confirm the word. Suddenly, he began to manifest. And it was the spirit of death. And the Lord said, I should cast the spirit of death out of him. Because death is after him. Death is after you. I'm going to speak to you, but the, the more serious thing is actually breaking this from you. And I'll speak the edifying word of the Lord to you concerning your future, concerning what God has for you. Okay? You will not die. Please stretch your hands here. You will not die because it looks as if the spirit of death has been knocking at his door. You will not die. Lift your hands to heaven. Say, Lord Jesus, as I pray, I cancel every attack over his life and I release him from the grace of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for him. Begin to pray for him. Begin to pray for him. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not die but you will live to declare the good name of the Lord in the land of the living. We come against every spirit of death. As the Bible tells us, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We bind the spirit of death on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, you will not die, but you will live to declare the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. You will not die. You will not die. Death in the name of Jesus. We rebuke you. We return you right back to the sender. In the name of Jesus. La brande so ka grande la banda ma ka ka ya da ka ya we speak life I mean oh, so we don't take it off in the name and of Jesus remende che roba ka shandare ba roba ka la brande so ka grande la banda ma da ka ya da ka ya la brande ma da ka ya in the name of Jesus we break that spirit of death in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah remende che roba ka shandare ba roba ka la brande so ka grande la banda ma da ka ya da ka ya in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah Lucia now in the name of Jesus. Father, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, let everything be restored back, whatever the enemy tempered. Let healing be hers. Let deliverance be hers in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure tomorrow you are here, okay? You do the direction. You do uh, the, the water. Tomorrow, eh, the water 10 to 1, eh? Many of you will go into serious deliverance. Serious. Some of you, it will be like a, a, a joy. Some of you, eh, you'll be drink, you will be drunk in the spirit tomorrow as you partake of the one of the spirit of God. And as we go, we'll be going deep, 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 deep. The next, we'll be doing some things. I'm just taking it easy. I'm tired. I'm a little bit tired. That's why I'm taking it easy today. But tomorrow, I've settled in. We'll go into deep. I will start early. Papa, Papa, lift up your hands. Tomorrow I'll speak to you, okay? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, you showed me as I pray, cover him in the blood. 
let the enemy that followed him from today let everything be cancelled I command the spirit of death to leave him now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I release him now I release him now from the claws of the enemy I decree declare you will live and not die from today death has been aborted from your life and you've received the spirit of life you've received the spirit of life in the name of Jesus amen please come tomorrow okay yes I'm going to speak to you We are okay. We are we are going to do something. Uh, please, we're going to take our offering. Many of us are. I know we are. We are all tired. You can just lift up your offering. I don't know how. How we do it? Okay. So uh, there are various ways on your screen.